the music ministry tonight. Isaiah 41. Isaiah 41. And you know, the Bible says that, uh, that uh, we, we, we don't even, uh, even for all that we can read in the Bible, uh, with regard to what the Lord has laid up for us over there, we're still not able to grasp it all until that time we get there. And I'm telling you, uh, I was thinking about that when we sang that word, the glorious. Uh, I'm not even sure we know what that really means. I know one day we will, amen. And the Lord's going to define it for us in sight. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward to that. Isaiah 41, and we're going to, uh, Lord willing, finish up uh, looking at this Isaiah 41 and, uh, and verse 9 and 10. And primarily, let's go to verse 10 for time's sake tonight. Uh, where we have been talking about some principles to help encourage us uh, at all times of life. Isaiah 41 and 10, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Lord, we are grateful for your word that is such a strength. And I think as I'm looking at this verse and... Uh, and uh, reading it uh, here in the audience of your people, uh, thinking about that time and that place from morning to morning where we seek to spend our, uh, the first moments of our day with you. And I'm thinking about uh, how many in this auditorium seek to do the same. And uh, we know that we must be what we should be uh, from day to day, but in those, uh, especially as we're out and about, uh, but as we are in those quiet moments before you, I, I'm encouraged, I'm praying that your word and the thoughts of it will be a continual strength to your people in their private time, Lord, with you. In that one-on-one -on -one fellowship, may the word of God give strength and help and direction and instruction in righteousness as it does for us from this verse in a very special way. We pray that you'd help tonight as we consider some, uh, some concluding thoughts regarding it and that you might, uh, Lord, uh, uh, continue to give us peace and help, uh, especially as we go from this place even tonight and into the remainder of our week. Thank you, Lord, for the Bible. Help us, Lord, to receive it with joy, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And so we have been talking about uh, here this matter of uh, not fearing uh, fear thou not is the, is the command in verse number 10. And uh, we've talked about some things that we do fear and, uh, and uh, the many different things that we do fear. And, uh, and then looking into the, the second phrase there of verse 10, we have looked at why we fear uh, because we forget the Lord's presence. I'm thankful for a God that's present. And uh, I'm, I'm glad that we're not like, that our God is not like so many heathen gods. Uh, that is only in one place, and uh, that idol that is there that can't see, that can't hear, that can't speak, uh, that was made by the very hands of the people that worship it and can't even help those hands uh, moving forward. Matter of fact, that's part of what Isaiah has been uh, inspired by God to remind the people of, uh, regarding uh, is to beware of this idolatry that crept in among them and, uh, and uh, not, to, uh, not to follow these other gods. Uh, but our God is a personal God, and our God is a present God. Our God is a helpful God, a loving God, a kind and gracious God who has a heart for his people. Now, there's not much heart in the world today. Uh, and, uh, you know, especially considering the events out in Texas and really many, many events over the last several years that we have seen uh, in our country, it seems as though, of course, uh, we see the Bible clearly laid out before us uh, with regard to the, the ferocity of men and, uh, and the darkness of the age. And, uh, and so to come across a verse like verse 10 that just brings us into, a, into the sunlight of calm peace before our God, realizing that God has not forgotten us, that God is present, that He is good, that He is kind, that He is loving, and He is that, He is those things to every one of you that know him tonight, every one. God wants to encourage you with his presence. He wants to strengthen you 
uh, with his present. He, uh, he is always present. We, uh, we looked at that. He is always loving. He is always faithful, our God. Now, you and I are not always faithful. <laughs> and when we're not, it breaks our heart. And we're, we're, we're certainly discouraged and, uh, and, and down. But the, the strength of recovery, if you want to call it the strength of repentance, the strength of confession, the, the strength of coming home to God is, the, is in the remembrance that though we were not or are not faithful, He is. And He uh, will be there uh, and will be with us right on to that time that He then takes us to heaven to be with Him as we have uh, even sung about tonight. And so He says, Fear thou not, I am with thee. Then we looked at that next phrase, Be not dismayed. That sudden anxiety because of trouble or some unforeseen circumstance in life. Uh, be not dismayed. Don't let your life get into the point of moving from one dismay to the next. And he tells us why, uh, uh, why that should be the case in that next phrase, for I am thy God. Dismay basically says everything is hopeless. It's all over there's nothing, nothing left but destruction and disaster. Well, that would be true if it weren't for that phrase where God says, I am thy God. You remember the Bible says all the way back in Genesis chapter number one uh, that the Lord moved upon the face of the waters and God said, let there be light. Sometimes our life is like that creation time in darkness and turmoil and God comes bringing light. And the only one that can bring light is God. So that phrase, I am thy God, was a reminder and is a reminder and encouragement to us, but also a reminder to Israel that he is far different from those idols that they, and false gods that they had had, a, had, a, had an opportunity to follow. You know what? And there's still so much false religion in the world today. And that's kind of what breaks our heart about uh, some of these circumstances that people go through like they're going through in Texas is that they have religion but no relationship with their God. Uh, and, uh, and they're going to find, uh, 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 you know, concerningly, they're going to find very little peace in the end when it's over uh, because they don't worship the true and living God. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, and so... Uh, if God is indeed their God, there'll be strength, there'll be help, there'll be peace. How do we know that? Well, because the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter number 1 uh, that God comforts us so that we can be used then to comfort others. We don't like the circumstances he puts us through sometimes, and uh, many times they can be very grievous, but they're always for a purpose, and that purpose is for God to teach us his presence, his comfort, and then uh, to, uh, to strengthen us to have the same ministry to others. Freely, of course, we so often quote, you have received, freely give. And don't, just be a, uh, don't just be a sponge, but pass on the blessing, amen, that God gives to you and your walk in presence with him. He says, you don't need to be dismayed because I am thy God. And he goes on to give a list of things that our God will do on our behalf as we remember him and stay before him. And we started last Wednesday looking at that first one where he said he will strengthen us. He will strengthen. Isn't that what we need? We need strength. Have you ever felt like you've, you've gone just about as far as you can go? You're not sure you can take that next step? Uh, uh, and uh, maybe not just physically, but what about emotionally? What about mentally? Uh, what about your courage or the failure of that? And we're not sure exactly how we're going to make that next step. Uh, advance for God. Well, it'll be because of his strength. It'll be because of his strength. And so uh, the arm of flesh will fail you, he says. Uh, but of course, the strength of the Lord endures. And so he said, I will strengthen you. How does he do that? We, we listed several ways. He strengthens us by uh, his saints and the fellowship of the saints and iron sharpening iron. And so we need to be not only receptive to the strengthening of other believers, but we need to ask God to help us be a strength to others. I want to bless people's heart and bless people's mind. And uh, uh, I want to encourage their life for God. Uh, be the kind of person that strengthens them in the things of, 
of the Lord. And don't be like Job's wife, you know. <laughs> uh, well, just curse God and die. You know, I mean, uh, we, we can do better than that, I think. Amen. I, I think we can do better than Job's friend. All right. Miserable comforters are y'all. Let's ask the Lord to help us take the strength that he gives us uh, and then pass that on to others by way of word and deed. God strengthens us through the saints. God strengthens us, we said, by his sanctuary. And we revisited Psalm 73 where Asaph had almost given up and backslid on God and quit on God because he saw that the unbelievers were doing so well in the world and they never did seem to have a problem. Matter of fact, not only did they not have any problem, but they seemed to have everything heart and mind and eye could wish. Uh, and he said, uh, my, fe my feet uh, well nigh slipped. Uh, and uh, then he went into the sanctuary, he said, in verse 17 of Psalm 73, and he said, I understood therein. And we, we were reminded uh, that these times of worship in the sanctuary are supposed to be uh, like a reset button for us spiritually. And they help us kind of realign our focus and realign our heart and realign our life with the Lord and take strength uh, through, the, through those days until we meet again. Then we said he strengthens us by his scriptures. Amen. Uh, the saints, the sanctuary, and the scriptures. The word of God. And as we uh, prayed a moment ago, just thinking about the strength of the word. The strength of the word. Uh, and how that is to work and does work uh, in the pliable heart uh, of any individual that will receive its seed uh, and believe its words. Uh, Psalm 119, verse 28, My soul melteth for heaviness, heaviness. Strengthen thou me according to thy word. He strengthens us. And then we finished up here uh, in uh, last week uh, thinking about how he strengthens us by his supply. And that is his answer to our prayer. God responds. Isn't that something? That the God of heaven responds to our requests as individuals. The Lord knows your specific need and your specific moment and your specific place, and he responds to that place uh, out of love and faithfulness to his people. I'm so thankful for that personal relationship, even though a lot of times it's a lot of correcting going on <laughs> and a lot, of, a lot of instruction, but it's all out of love, uh, and it's all out of, uh, 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 done from a, a heart of long-suffering and patience we read from Zechariah 10 and 6, I will strengthen the house of Judah, for I am the Lord their God and will hear them. And can you imagine? God said, I will hear you. Now that ought to move us. But a lot of times, listen, we, we get so busy in the, uh, in the scramble of it all that we forget the promise. And we end up trying to go on or eventually uh, 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 going on in our own strength and uh, maybe in, the, in our own wisdom, when the Lord said, listen, brethren, I will hear thee. You know what the devil wants to tell you? That God's not listening. That God's not going to hear you. What are the needs of your life and the burden? There are very many of them, and probably in every individual's life tonight, uh, there, would be, where, there would be a multitude of needs on different fronts, and God said, I will hear you. Now, of course, there are promises, that, uh, 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 prerequisites for that, aren't there? If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. And so I need to come on his terms. By the way, we talked about that on Sunday when we were talking about service and how we're to offer a sacrifice wholly acceptable unto the Lord. We always must come to God on his terms. This is not a negotiation. <laughs> you know. God is the one that sets the... That's the mandate, and you and I come to him on his terms. But think about how he answers our prayers. Think about how he hears us. And there are a number of ways in which he does that. Uh, the Lord, for instance, according to the Scriptures, will provide uh, our need of wisdom. You know what we need in this life is God's wisdom. I, I uh, and of course, uh, many of you as, uh, uh, as well, uh, would, uh, would realize just how complicated the world can be, how complicated people can be. How, and I'm, not, uh, I, I'm just talking about how that the human mind and the will that God has given man 
can often respond in, a, in unexpected ways to circumstances of life, can respond in unexpected ways of, uh, to the word and instruction of God, and, uh, and our world gets in a mess because of it. And what we need is wisdom to cut through the fluff and cut straight in life. And that's only going to happen by the wisdom of God. So he says in James 1 and 5, if any of you uh, 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 lack wisdom, let him ask of God. You know, sometimes I think we have the idea, because there's a devil, uh, that uh, God's up in heaven saying, now listen here, you figure it out on your own. That's not what the Bible says. God is pleased when we seek his wisdom. I think he's, I think according to scriptures, uh, his heart is blessed when we come into him and say, Lord, I just do not know what to do. And I am looking for your leadership. I need your guidance. I need your wisdom to help me step and walk as I should. And he promises to do that. Let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally. The only one that, that lives that can give uh, wisdom without restraint is the God of all wisdom. You can't tap the end of his wisdom. And somebody comes in a circumstance and they're dismayed, right? Oh my goodness, this has never happened to anybody else before. Well, that'd be wrong. There's no new thing under the sun. Uh, no temptation, but such as is common to man. Uh, and here's the thing, though. You can never run out of God's wisdom. There's not a circumstance in any area of your life where you're going to stump God. <laughs> where God's going to say, oh, my goodness, you finally done it. Yeah. That's not the Lord. He said, I'll give you wisdom liberally and upbraideth not. And what that means is he's not going to, he's not going to belittle you about the need. He's not going to come along and say, you know, don't you know better or, you know, whatever. That's not God. God's, at, God's told us to come to him for wisdom and it shall be given him. Think about that need for wisdom and how God hears. Then think also about our need for righteousness. We don't have any righteousness. There is none righteous, no, not one. The only righteousness that you and I have is in Jesus Christ. Uh, he is made unto us righteousness, the Scripture said. And so uh, you and I don't have any, but we need it. Well, we need it to get to heaven, don't we? We're not going to, there's none of us that's, uh, obviously, if there's no righteousness, there cannot be any uh, righteousness sufficient to get us into heaven because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But we also need righteousness for this life. First of all, to honor God, right? If I'm going to honor God, I need to live right, need to do right, and God's going to have to help me know how to live and how to do. Uh, I need righteousness to be a, a proper witness and testimony for the Lord. Uh, that righteousness needs to shine forth as the sun and be a beacon to those that are lost in darkness. And God's the one that gives, us to us, gives it to us. In Matthew 5 and 6, he said this, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Now, why don't we see more righteousness? Because we don't meet the first part of the prerequisite many times. He says it's, it's a hunger and a thirst for righteousness. And we have, we often have some degree of it, but because of our flesh and our stubbornness, we're only willing to go so far. God said there must be a, 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 a deep hunger that motivates us uh, to be faithful to him and really, more than that, to seek his face. The Bible says if we seek him, he will be found of us. Think of that a minute. If we seek him, he will be found. You know what's in our, the mind, in our mind so often as, as we go through the life day to day? Where is God? Is God doing anything? That's why, you know, Sunday morning we've talked about a year's worth of what God's doing. But uh, you know, where is God? But God is, God is there to provide, of course, this matter of righteousness. He shall be filled. Then think about this, uh, this prayer and, and need that we have that we call out for and the need for love. 
the need for love. People can be unloving, but God never is. Even when he chastises, it's in love. Even when there's punishment, it's love. The love of God. We need that love. And of course, uh, he is love. We love because he first loved us. Look, I'm, I'm trying to just get this point that uh, you know, so it's become so glibly, uh, glibly stated that it just goes in one ear and out the other. But in... <laughs> Is God loves you. God loves you. There might be some people around you that don't. <laughs> uh, and certainly the devil and his hordes don't. But it doesn't matter what's going on in your life tonight and a million other things that somehow or another you found the grace of God just to set aside for a moment and focus on the goodness of the Lord. Doesn't matter what you're going to walk into you when you walk out of these. It doesn't, have, it doesn't matter how many of those circumstances you created in your own will and your own flesh. God loves you. <laughs> he just loves you. That's all there is to it. And why? Because we look at people, we, we get, the, you know, uh, we, ought first, we ought to first be surprised that anybody loves us. <laughs> right? But we can look at some people and say, oh, my goodness. Uh, you know, uh, and uh, how does that happen? Because he's God. And here's the thing about that love. Think about it. It's always perfect. It's always complete. It's always holy. It's always right. Because he is God. And he, listen, brethren, he loves you, every individual you, with that love every moment of every day even when you've turned on him even when you've questioned him uh, doubted him or whatever yet he still loves Romans 8 and 35 says who shall separate us from the love of Christ tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things uh, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. You know what I'm concerned about with regard to, to, uh, to people is that the, they've bought the devil's lie that somehow or another God's mad at them and God doesn't love them. God gets angry with sin. There's no doubt about that. To try to deny that is blasphemy against a holy God. Uh, uh, but, um, uh, but you should never buy the lie that somewhere or another God stopped loving you. Matter of fact, you and I know it, but so often we forget about it. Uh, Calvary is evidence that his love is never ending. I have loved thee with an everlasting... That's you, right where you sit, right where you live, right where you are. God loves you. We are made conquerors through that love. I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's the love of God. And what, what I need that love, don't I? And my heart cries out for that love, doesn't it? Doesn't it? And, and uh, sometimes when we find others around us, now, sometimes even in our own family that just don't love like they should, God is always ready to love. Always ready to love. Uh, and so he, uh, he uh, supplies that need for us. Then there's a fourth thing that the Lord supplies that, that's a cry of our heart, that's a need of our heart, and that is acceptance. <laughs> acceptance. God uh, accepts uh, Ephesians 1 and 6. For the, uh, uh, to the praise of the glory of His grace, wherein He hath made us accepted, accepted in the Beloved. Uh, if an individual is born again, they're accepted in the Beloved. God is the one that makes us acceptable. So when we go back to Romans chapter number 12 and verse 1 that says we're to present ourselves 
an acceptable sacrifice. It's God that makes us acceptable. That's what, uh, that's what um, uh, Paul said. Uh, he hath uh, enabled me, putting me into the ministry. God is the one that's allowed that to happen. You and I, of course, in and of ourselves are nothing. But here's the thing. We always have acceptance with God. And, and uh, uh, now, again, we, we have acceptance as we are coming to him on his terms. But if we do, we're always accepted. And you know, one of the, illustra- one of the illustrations of the Bible uh, is the prodigal son. I mean, he went off, man, and made a mess of his inheritance and, 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 and riotous living. And blew it all uh, and then was left in the, in, in the pigsty eating the slop with the pigs. And, uh, and uh, in, in that moment, he realized, you know, what a fool he'd been. And he said, I'm going back to my father. And what happened? When he went back to his father, he found his father ready to receive him. He was accepted with his father. That's a picture of our God. You know who he wasn't accepted with his brother. Sometimes that happens to us with people sometimes. (laughs) Maybe they don't accept, but God does. And if if we'll come to him as he has designed, we will always find an acceptance with him. Again, so many people have believed the lie of the devil. We, we have some sin in our life or uh, we've made some choice that dishonored the Lord and somehow or another we believe the lie, listen, that we shouldn't even darken God's door, if you want to call it that way. He won't accept me. But the Bible is clear that if we come with an attitude of confession and repentance and realizing the error of our way, Father, I have sinned against heaven in thy sight. And then, you know, no more worthy to be called thy son. None of us are worthy to be children of God. All that worthiness is in Jesus Christ. When we realize that, we find God accepting as we come to him. He gives us acceptance. A fifth, a fifth item uh, that we'll mention uh, tonight, and the final one, is that, that uh, in, our heart, uh, in our heart there is this cry there is this call for security. We want to be safe. We want to know that everything's all right. <laughs> we want to be secure. And it's God that hears that call of the human heart and, and meets that need. In Hebrews 13, 5, he said, Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. In John 6 and verse 37, uh, all uh, that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. That's God's promise to you. That promise in the Bible for you. That promise just not for somebody else, it's for you. God has said he will never leave you nor forsake you. And so he strengthens us. He strengthens us uh, by the saints and by the sanctuary and by the scriptures and by these uh, manifold uh, evidences of his supply, of his hearing. You remember, somebody might be saying, well, now look, I hadn't called out to God for that. Well, you probably should have. But if you didn't, the Bible says that it, uh, when we don't know how to pray, the Spirit of God helpeth our infirmity. And you have the Spirit of God in you as a believer, calling out for the need of the heart, calling out for the need, and God hears that call. I will hear them. And if we, if we will realize that, we will find strength in the Lord. And so he says, Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee by hearing the need and meeting the need of your heart. Let's stand together and bow our heads for prayer. And so what we need to do is focus upon him with the needs. When we, when we say casting all of our care upon him, for he cares for us, there you have uh, evidence of that even in these verses. Lord, we are grateful for your care. 
And certainly in this life, we need your strength. And so I pray that we will avail ourselves of these, uh, of these different uh, characteristics of your supply that we might find that strength. And tonight specifically, as has been our heart, Lord, uh, since we started looking at these verses uh, in a little more detail, uh, tonight, Lord, I pray that you will bless this people with strength, that they will realize your presence, that they will realize your person, that you are with them, that you are their God. And Father, I pray that the thoughts of that would give them strength uh, in the lives of so many that are struggling with burdens with family and burdens with health and burdens with finances and burdens on the job. Lord, may your people look to you for strength. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. As our heads are bowed and eyes are closed, the piano begin to play. Maybe the Lord spoke to your heart now here.